How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Good? Excited to be back for another year expo? Yeah. All right. So my next guest doesn't mean a huge introduction, no pun intended. Um, standing at seven foot tall, Carol is a cult celebrity, celebrity easily recognized for his numerous roles and characters. His career started in Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and he's going to the Ewoks Battle of Indoor, Witches of Eastwick, the Twin Peaks series, Babylon 5, Men in Black, and many, many more. Many fans will know him as Lurch in the Addams Family films and his reoccurring role in Star Trek The Next Generation. Please put your hands together and welcome Carol Stroykin. Is this working? Yeah. Yep. Cool. <laughs> How are you doing today? How's your trip to Cincinnati been so far? Uh, ch great. Shorts? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shorts. Well, actually a long trip, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're most known probably for Lurch in the Adams Family. And what was it like for you originally to take this role, you know, taking it from Ted Cassidy who originally – you know, originated it on the TV series. Yeah. Uh, well, it was, I, I was living in, in Hollywood at the time, and uh, people would walk up to me and say, oh, you're Lurch. And I would say, no, no, that's Ted Cassidy. And uh, so when I got a call to meet the director and the producer for the movie, he said, well, what do you think? And I s told him that story. And I said, so from now on, I wouldn't have to say it's somebody else anymore. <laughs> and they said, OK, well, that's it then. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you were preparing for this role, was there, did you watch a lot of the Addams Family to kind of like get the character down? Or did you like, you no. know what, I'm going to make this my own? <clears throat> they, they didn't watch us. They didn't want us to. Uh, watch the series as an inspiration because apparently the Adams Family heirs are split in two. One part of the family has the rights to the TV rights and the other part to the movie rights. So, and we were in the movie rights camp, so we couldn't do anything that they were doing that was unique to the TV series. Yeah. Now, you've, you've been in many big franchises, Adam's Family, Men in Black, Star Wars, Star Trek. Like, how has it been being a part of such big fandom? Well, it was fantastic. It's, I mean, I've been very lucky. And also because I was a fan of most of the movies I was in, so especially Star Trek and Twin Peaks. Yeah. And, and how, how was it, uh, not only Twin Peaks originally doing it, but getting to come back again many years later? I was very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, can you speak to more, like the coming back, like did they, like were you one of the first people there, like we gotta, we gotta get Carol back? Uh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> The, the, the second, the return was very different from the original in the way they were shooting it uh, because green screens and special effects had become much more uh, run of the mill, so to speak. So a lot of the stuff was done uh, with a green screen background. And uh, so that it had a very different feel in the way it was being shot. Now for you, it, like you said, you know, it's very different with the green screen. Like how, how do you have to adjust your acting when you're like, it's, it's green screen. Like I can't, I can't see that behind me or next to me. Uh, well, I've never, uh, uh, many times, actors have to react to something that's not there. I've never had to do that. So for me, uh, 
the strangest experience is just a regular uh, dialogue with somebody else. And then they do over the shoulder shot and so. And the cameraman always wants you to look elsewhere. So you can't look the other person in the eye. You have to look just past them. And that to me is always very confusing. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you, out of all of these characters, do you have a favorite character that you really enjoyed playing more than others, or they're all just kind of different? Uh, I, I all, well, they're all favorites for different reasons. Yeah, okay. Uh, Star Trek, because I got to come back every year and wear these fantastic costumes and uh, see how the actors were growing into their parts and becoming more and more unruly as the <laughs> uh, so I, I really pitied the directors who uh, were working on the last year of the series because there were always there were always practical jokes going on and so, yeah. are, are there any, any practical jokes you can tell us about? No. The, <laughs> n uh, well, you, those have to stay secret. Get, no, you, can't, you, can't, you don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> no, it's just... I, I can't think of something okay. that's stood out. So. Now, with Star Trek, you got to come back reoccurring, um, but there were multiple characters you played. What was it like? Like each time when you came back, did you like, okay, this time I'm going to try this this time over what I did the last time? Uh, no, it's more like doing it better, uh, filling out a character, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. And this was a, a very interesting, something I want to know more about. You're into spherical panorama photography. How... I've never even heard of it until you know I kind of looked it up. Like, how did you come across doing stuff like this? Yeah, now it's pretty common because uh, Google Maps yeah. has it. But when I started, it was still you had to to build a, a lot of your own rigs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was more uh, pioneer stuff. And I uh, initially became interested because. When we, I had a production company with a friend, and I always wanted to, if you had to do a special effect with a green or a blue screen, blue screen, you can never have something in front of you. And so I was always interested in a technology that would enable that. And nowadays, they do that with spherical mm -hmm. panoramas, often, not always. Um, so it was a natural interest. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great for a while. I, I got to shoot uh, a whole series of panoramas for, the, for Universal City, for the back lot. And uh, so I got I got a few nice gigs out of it, yeah. And did you get a you know it's kind of a like you said a little more common now. Did you have any hand in helping like you know the technology kind of push forward? No, I, I can't say I came up okay. with anything <laughs> special. I I taught a bunch of people how to do it, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> And we're going we're gonna to open it up to questions to people if they want to uh, come up to the mic here soon. Um, now, as, as your career has gone on, is like the roles that you have taken has, you know, being seven foot tall, has, has any of that affected you in your career? Like, oh, I didn't get this or, oh, you know, I wish I could do this role. Uh, no, I... I, I never minded being typecast that much. Um, 
just being in a normal movie would probably have been uh, a strange experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for, for Carol they want to come up and, and ask? Uh, I've always liked the relationship that Lurch had with the children on the show. Did, was it fun filming with the, the kids, uh, Wednesday and Pugsley? And um, did, did you guys joke around together or have any kind of relationship outside of the filming? Well, they, they, they were very different. Wednesday, Christina Ritchie was already a total pro. And she came up with a lot of the things that you see in the movie by herself. And Posley uh, was only interested in uh, running off with a golf cart on the studio lot. <laughs> and apparently he totaled two of them. And a few years ago I met him again and guess what he's doing now? He has a trucking company. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I know you've done two different movies based on Stephen King's works. My question is, did you ever get to meet him? Uh, Stephen King. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I almost met him. Uh, there was a French documentary uh, that they flew me over to, to Bangor, where he lives in Maine. And, uh, but he was in Florida at the time, so I missed that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so, I know you played a part on the TV show Charmed. As the tall man, yeah. how? On which one? The the TV show Charmed. 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 Oh yeah. Oh, yes. I forgot all about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. So that's like one of my favorite shows. So knowing that you was in it, what was your favorite part of being in that episode? And. I only did one charm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 you only did one up. Yeah, you was the tall man that was in the cage in the womb raider. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what was my favorite? Favorite part of being part of that series. Ah. Being in that, ep being able to be part of the series with, even though you was only in with one episode. Yeah. Well, it was the first time that I had heard of it, and uh, it sounded like a great uh, concept. And uh, so, yeah, it, w it was a great experience, very well, different from most shoots, but uh, yeah. yeah. I'd like to say is that I've thoroughly enjoyed your parts and everything you, you've oh, done. They've you. been some, you know, some of my favorite movies along the way, um, but... Um, Particularly, you know, Star Trek Next Generation with uh, getting to be with Majel Barrett. Um, how, how was she as a, as a person? And because it, it seemed like she was chewing the scenery a little bit, shall we say. <laughs> well, she was, as, as far as I know her, she was just as outspoken in real life as she was in the series. And uh, uh, after Jean Roddenberry died, she used to give big Christmas parties, and I was lucky enough to always be invited to those. And it was, yeah, it was great fun. She always had a magician. <laughs> it, so, yeah. yeah it, it's a special family in that, yeah. that, that yeah, yeah. whole cast. So. Thank you. Now, you got to be part of the Star Wars Ewok movies, uh, you know, Battle for Endor, 
what was it like coming into this already established, you know, big Star Wars lore and you're like a bad guy, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, I was kind of happy because I, I could eventually, I hadn't done Star Trek yet, but eventually now I can say I've been in both and those have very different fan bases. Uh, like, my agent who uh, organizes or gets me to these conventions, he is a big Star Wars fan, and he is totally uninterested in Star Trek. <laughs> 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 so it's, it's great to have been part of both uh, universes, so to speak. Yeah. Now, do, you, do you have a favorite, or will you, will you, uh, you're like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that quiet? <laughs> uh, Star Trek. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you also got to be part of Babylon Five too, which was a a pretty big sci-fi series. I mean, it, probably not the rabid fan base that you know the other two, but it still it has its fans and, and excited. It was was that another just like yeah, being able yeah, to? Yeah, that was great to add a be able to add that to the collection. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was very much into this computer called the Amiga. And uh, on Babylon 5, the, the world that they mm -hmm. live in uh, was actually all done on an Amiga computer. So yeah, it was doubly interesting for that reason. And men, let's jump over to uh, Men in Black. What, I mean, you've got to work with Barry Sonnenfeld, you know, a couple times. Um, how is it, like, just doing this crazy creatures in this world with, with him? Uh, well, he's very meticulous uh, in everything that will be on the screen. So... Uh, that means he's very demanding. Uh, not so much of the actors, but uh, like makeup, uh, he would send me back to makeup because something was not quite right. And uh, yeah, uh, the first Adams Family was his first, it was his directorial de debut. And uh, by the time he was doing Men in Black, he was a complete pro, so yeah. Do you do you have any directors that you loved working for? Uh, I I loved working uh, uh, for David Lynch because I was already a fan and it was great to be in the series. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, oh uh, George Miller for. Uh, uh, which is a V-Swig. Um, so there's probably some, a few more, but yeah. And do we have any more questions for, for Carol? Yeah. Hi, so my favorite thing you ever did is Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the movie. Uh, it looked like you were having such a great time and you're surrounded by all these rock stars and pop stars and just famous people from the 70s. Do you have any memories specifically from that set and your time on set with those people? Uh, no, I, I, I uh, got to ride in the limo for the Bee Gees a number of times. I don't know where we were going, but uh, uh, they would say, hey, Carl, do you want to come along? Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, there were so many uh, musical people there, rock stars and uh, pop stars. So, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And it was, I mean, there were so many people always. It was, uh, it was great. Thank you. And I got to write my, uh, I used to have a Harley Davidson. And so I got to write... A Harley Davidson again, so yeah, awesome. everything was good. 
Hi, uh, you mentioned The Witches of Eastwick, and that's a really good uh, movie. Uh, do you have any stories about uh, that uh, said working with Jack Nicholson and, and all the other uh, celebrities and big names that were on that movie? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the ladies were wonderful to uh, work with, and, and so was Jack Nicholson. Uh, one thing that I, where I really got to realize how great an actor he is, is there was one scene that we had to do over about 15 times. And each time he would give a different rendition, but always in such a way that you would be able to cut different versions together. And well, that was pretty amazing. Are there any actors that you would love to work with if you ever had the chance? Uh, I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to step into that. Uh. <laughs> now, as you know, there there's a new you know, rendition of the Adams Family coming out Wednesday. It's coming. Yeah. Did they contact you at all for any kind of input uh, for it or anything like that? No, no, no. Uh, I, I heard about it just when they were when they were already starting to shoot or okay. so. Yeah, um, but it's a great concept. Uh, there are a lot of things. I, I wonder how. Well, nowadays in in college you have. Uh, safe rooms or what are they called mm. where and I, I wonder how the Wednesday character is gonna deal with that. <laughs> I don't think she has any patience with that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. now, do you do you keep in contact with a lot of your stars, you know, for, from the Adams family or anything like that, like still today? Uh I for a while, I stayed in contact with Angelica, uh, just because we would run into each other at a gallery opening or a play or so. Um, and uh, Twin Peaks has these small conventions, they call them Twin Peaks festivals. And so I, I get to meet a, a lot of people there or in the series. Oh, that's that's very cool, being able yeah. to like reconnect with them over and yeah, over. Yeah. Um, was there, like when you got to come back for Twin Peaks, was there a lot of that, I, it, even if you kept contact, getting back on set with a lot of familiar faces going, you, know, you already worked with David Lynch before. No, that, and, that was the thing, because so much was done with the green screen. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but I, I did, get to get in a few scenes with Kyle and who else? Somebody else, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. Now, we, we had a question about um, Stephen King. You were in, you know, the, basically the, the sequel to The Shining. Um, what was it like to come back with you know, there's this great book that he wrote and being able to to bring that to the screen because I absolutely loved the movie. I thought it was great. I thought everybody in it was great. But being able to work on his story and kind of come come into this. Well, it, it, it was a very interesting story and mm -hmm. um, I had read the book before. Um, and I was, I was very happy with my part. Um, I already had all the back trouble that I have now. That's why I'm walking with a hiking stick. And I, never before had I asked any special props uh, on a movie. 
But this time I thought, well, I'm going to ask for a cane so I have something to lean on. Because the setup for a shot always takes forever, right? So you have to stand there and wait. Sorry, my voice is going. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I asked the propsman, I said, can you get me a cane? And I want uh, eagle's head as the uh, eagle with a pointy beak uh, as the handle. I thought, okay, he's never going to find it. <laughs> and within an hour, he came back with that very thing. So, yeah. Did you get to keep the cane? No, it was a beautiful <sighs> cane. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bummer. Yeah. Does anybody have any more uh, questions for him they, they would like to ask? I think we still have, we still have some time. If there's anything else you want to ask of him. Uh, do, do you have any projects in the works that uh, you can talk about right now? No, I'm, I'm kind of recuperating right now of various things. So I, it's okay with me to not have any projects. <laughs> Take a little time off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Travel a little bit. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, like, what's your favorite genre to work in? I know you've done like sci-fi and horror, so. My favorite what? Genre. Genre. Oh. Uh, I like both science fiction and although I don't like watching horror movies that much, it's great to be in them. <laughs> So, so what makes them so much fun to be in over, over watching them? If well, everything is overwrought and, and uh, there's a, a lot of blood and I don't know. It's all, uh, <laughs> it, uh, you can never have enough sauce in a horror movie. <laughs> now, do, do you enjoy like characters where you have to wear a lot of makeup over you know just you know being you in in a movie uh or show it's the longest i had to be in the makeup chair for uh, a mask was seven hours I had to be on the set at two o'clock at night. And that's when our son was about three months old or so. So <laughs> you can imagine how much sleep I get. <laughs> but, you, didn't get a, you didn't get a chance to sleep while they're just applying yeah, the yeah, stuff I to did, you? Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, and I, I don't like the feeling of this glue on your face. Uh, so before they put it on, it's, it's really uncomfortable and I try to get away from it. Once <laughs> it's on, it's okay, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, which, uh, which makeup did you do that you had to uh, sit for seven hours? That was for a, mo a movie that nobody has probably seen. It was a pilot for Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, and it was, a, they had a big budget for it, but I don't think they ever did anything with it. Uh, I think they showed it in theaters in other countries, but that was about okay. it. Yeah. Um, I any, any other questions that anyone wants to ask him? Here we have another one. Hi. So I guess uh, with the question about the makeup, I was wondering, since you said it's kind of rough putting it on, but when it's on, it's fine, is it rough taking it off? or Taking it off takes almost as long as putting it on. <laughs> and... Uh, so you just have to be very patient and sit there and, uh, yeah. 
And you, you usually get to go home after everybody has already left. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, I guess patience is a virtue, so. <laughs> <laughs> and why, why does it take longer? I, I feel like it would be easy just to peel off, or is it, they don't want to, they don't want to. No, it's skin. just, they can't get it off in one piece, so it's all these little pieces of latex okay. foam. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the, the Adams family, they wanted, originally they wanted to put a lot of makeup on me and prosthetics and stuff. And uh, then Angelica has her own makeup person. And she was looking at them doing that. And she said, no, he doesn't know, need that. Let, here, let me do that. And she came over with a powder puff and with some stuff. Said, here, here. Okay, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. I didn't have to... Uh, have thank, thank goodness she was there for you, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it like working with Raul Julia? Oh, it, it was like great. he would be a riot. Uh, it, uh, I, I got to spend... I got to spend an evening with Raul Julia in a bar uh, when we had to do the press junket and we were in New York in a hotel and it started at 7 in the morning and it ended at 7 at night. All these different TV uh, interviews and they were all watching each other so after a few of these interviews, they always ask the same questions. So it, it, it was pretty horrible. And Raul was just mad as hell. So <laughs> after the thing was over, he said, come, we're going to go to the bar. And he said, what is the most expensive drink you have here? And the bartender said, well, we have this bottle of cognac from the 19th century, said, so, okay, that's what we're going to take. And I, I never drink cognac, but I thought, okay, I'm not going to pass up on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it pretty good? Like, uh, I, I'd, I'll never well, get a chance to drink something that old. Again, but. if you're a lover of cognac, it was probably pretty good. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were like, <laughs> yeah. Hi. I know you said that the one movie you asked for the cane for, but was there wait, any wait, other... Wait, wait, speak up. Please. Sorry. I know you asked for the cane on the one movie, but were there any other filmings where they themselves just accommodated you for your height or your back problems or anything like that? He, he, he asked, in Doctor Sleep, you, yeah. you asked for the cane. Were there any other films or shows where they accommodated you for your No, your I, I, I never asked for anything, I, I probably should have, but <laughs> it just never occurred to me that you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Or you would have got a cool eagle cane every time if you could have, right? Right. <laughs> From now on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much time we got? But I, I, I loved playing the character of uh, Grandpa Flick. It was it was fun to do. That was I, I will tell you that was a a, par, a piece of that movie was tough to watch because I have an 11 year old boy who plays baseball. You guys who have seen it will know what I'm talking about. Um, but it was a, it's a very good movie. It's a very good movie. Well done. Well, that I can tell you something about that uh, scene. I forget the kid's name, but he is fantastic and. So we were all standing around him and we were gonna torture him, right? And he said, okay, I, I, have, to, I have to concentrate, for, I have to get in the mood, right? So he said, okay, extra prepares. And uh, so after five minutes, he said, okay, I'm ready. So he was lying down on, in the dirt and everybody started doing what they were supposed to do. And he was, 
He was just, he was so good, it was terrifying. So the first time, the rest of the actors were all <laughs> <laughs> very different from the way we were supposed to look. Uh, were some people thinking like he was actually being hurt? Or no, no, it was just, just an instinctive reaction. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I say, all the other ones, maybe it was only me, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I think we got time for a couple more questions. If anybody has any more questions to ask him, kind of wrapping up. Um, he will be, be here all weekend. Are you excited for your weekend? I mean, today's the first day of Cincinnati Comic Expo, but you still have a couple more days left. Is there anything in Cincinnati that you're, uh, you're going to try to do while you're here? Uh, I wish I was feeling good enough to do so, but I'm going to stay in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think when we uh, ask that question, most people are like, are you going to try Skyline or are you going <laughs> to... Yeah, no. <laughs> well, he will be here all weekend downstairs, and he will sign for you. He's uh, in the first row as you're, you're walking in. Um, I want to thank you for coming to the Cincinnati Comic Expo and talking to all of us. It was, it was an amazing time. Yeah, you're welcome. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you.